Right, we do have Dr. Pat Abbott right now joining us by the phone. Dr. Abbott, can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right, you know what? You are the expert here, uh, and it looks like a 5.2, a, a pretty measurable earthquake. Can you explain basically what's going on? Oh, certainly. Uh, I happen to have been standing on the third floor of my accountant's office here in Mission Valley. So we had we felt a very good shake. So I'm uh, told uh, it's just near Julian, which would be Elsinore Fault, which is part of the same fault system we felt with that Easter earthquake back in 2010. And the magnitudes in the fives would kind of correlate with what I have felt, but I haven't had an access yet to get to the uh, to read the actual seismic data. But magnitude five is on the Elsinore uh, sounds very reasonable, and and um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's where the final analysis comes out. Dr. Abbott, at, at, from what I am hearing, from what our producers are telling us, they're not expecting a you know, tsunami with, with this particular earthquake. Can you tell us how all of that works and, and basically you know, what triggers that tsunami warning, what doesn't? Well, for, first off, for a tsunami, you have to disturb the ocean water to put the energy into the water. So when we're talking about an earthquake that's inland a long distance from the sea, there's no way in the world that this particular event is going to disturb the ocean to any kind of a, uh, effect that's going to bother a human being. So if this is, it turns out to be in the magnitude fives, I kind of say, you know, hallelujah in the sense that fives don't usually cause significant damage unless it's right underneath a city or something or other. So uh, wait to hear some more of those, those kinds of kinds of details. And I understand that this was felt all the way up in L.A., also through Temecula. You know, in Southern California, our buildings are, are meant to hopefully withstand earthquakes. Can you talk about some of the, the structural integrity, some of the reinforcements that they have done in California as we are an area that obviously experiences this time, type of activity? Well, indeed, and, and we get better at preparing for earthquakes all the time. And, of course, the, the fundamental principle is this. You know, we, it's not the earthquakes that kill or that do the damage directly to us. It is the buildings, our structures, that fall on us. And if we look at buildings from the simplest sense, we have horizontal floors attached to vertical walls. And a horizontal floor shakes differently than a vertical wall does. And then they tend to come apart, crack, fail, and that's where all the problems are. So every time we've had a really large earthquake, since 1933, 1971, 1994, going through those things, the building codes are always strengthened afterwards to try to to not have the same kind of problem occur again. Uh, so in that sense, we're better prepared all the time. But there are still older buildings. There are still buildings in disrepair or things of that sort What we get these horrible shocks with. And a lot of those we don't really know until after the event happens then we see and try to learn from it and uh, hopefully correct it so that mistake doesn't occur again.